In this video I'd like to talk a little bit about what is known and in particular what is unknown about Hamilton paths and Hamilton cycles in graphs. So back in 1970, a mathematician named Lovas conjectured that every finite connected vertex transitive graph has a Hamilton path. Now we know what finite means. Finite means that there's a finite number of vertices and we understand what connected means. Perhaps we have not talked yet about what a vertex transitive graph is. So let's just define what we mean by vertex transitive so that we can see what uh, Lovas had in mind. In order to understand the idea of vertex transitivity, we need to recall the idea of an isomorphism. Now basically what we're talking about is an isomorphism not from one graph to a different graph, but from a graph to itself. So an automorphism of a graph G is an isomorphism from G to itself. So you just think about having um, an isomorphism alpha, which takes you from the vertices of the graph G to the vertices of the graph G. And if you have such an isomorphism, it is referred to as an automorphism. Now, if you do have such a thing, and you can map a vertex U in the graph, a little vertex u to a vertex v, then we think of u and v as being alike in the graph. In other words, they are called similar. So two vertices are similar if there is an automorphism alpha which maps u to v. So why do I mention all of this? Well, the reason is because a vertex transitive graph is a graph in which all of the vertices are similar. So let's write that. a vertex transitive graph is a graph in which all vertices all vertices are similar. So in other words you can take any pair of vertices in the graph and you will be able to find an automorphism which maps one of those vertices to the other. So let's take a look at some examples of vertex transitive graphs. Let's start with something pretty simple. I'm going to take a triangle. Now if you take a look at a triangle and you might want to call this vertex V1, V2, and V3. Now hopefully it's pretty clear to you that you could map V1 to V2, V2 to V3, V3 back to V1. You could also map uh, and then you'd end up with the same graph. You could also map, well basically it's pretty obvious, for any pair of these vertices you could map one to the other and within and stay within an automorphism. Maybe to be a bit more precise, let's say that I want to consider V1 and V2. Now for example, I could take um, my automorphism to map V1 to V2, to map V2 to V1, and to map V3 to itself. So in this mapping, I have to check that it is in fact an isomorphism. An isomorphism, of course, from the graph to itself. So what that means is that if I have v1, v2 as an edge in the original graph, I should still have sig uh, sorry, alpha of v1, alpha of v2 as an edge after the mapping. Now the original graph this is an edge of the original graph and of course this is going to be an edge of again technically it's the original graph because you're mapping to the same graph. So we want to check okay v1 v2 was an edge of the original graph after the mapping v1 got sent to v2 and v2 got sent to v1 and that is still an edge because sig alpha of v1 alpha v2 is just v2 v1 and we know that that is an edge. And finally, we can check the other ones like this. V1, V3 was an edge of the original. So let's check sigma. I keep saying sigma. I mean alpha. Alpha V1, alpha of V3. And what is that? Well, V1 gets sent to V2, and V3 gets sent to V3, and that is, in fact, an edge. 
So I've only really done this for two of them, but you can check the other. The other is done the same way, right? The edge v2, v3, we can see that after the mapping, it still is this in the graph. So in particular, using this mapping alpha, I was able to show that v1 and v2 are similar. But of course, you can do that for any pair of these, gra of these vertices. So this is an example of a vertex transitive graph. This one is vertex transitive. I'll just write vertex trans. So in fact, any cycle is going to be vertex transitive. If you just look at the cycle, every vertex in your cycle basically looks identical to any other vertex. If I'm sitting here at this vertex, or if I'm sitting here at this vertex, things look the same to me. If I'm sitting here, I'm just a single vertex on a cycle of length n, and uh, if I'm sitting here, things look exactly the same in the graph. Now let's think about something that's non-vertex transitive. Something like this. A path. Well, a path on at least three vertices, because if I had just two, maybe I'll just draw that again. If I have just two, these two vertices are similar, and that's not hard to show. But if I take a look at this path right here, P3, this is not vertex transitive, because there is no way to show that this vertex and this vertex are similar. In particular, this one has degree two, and this one has degree one, and so there will not be an automorphism that maps the two to each other. So. One particularly important thing to remember about vertex transitive graphs is that they must be regular. Vertex transitive graphs are regular. Are regular. So if a graph is vertex transitive, then it is regular. But don't be fooled just because a graph is regular does not make it vertex transitive. And here's a nice little example which I took from Wikipedia. It's called the fruct graph. So here it is. And we can easily see that this graph is three regular, but it is not vertex transitive. Not vertex transitive. And maybe as a little example for why, I'll take a look at maybe this vertex right here as my u, and this vertex right here as v. And you should notice that vertex u lies on a three cycle, and it also lies on a four cycle. But it, um, And of course, it lies on some other cycles, but those are all going to be much larger. But take a look at vertex v. It does not lie on any three cycle. It lies on this four cycle, and on this five cycle, and on several larger cycles, but not on a three cycle. So we can test and show that u and v are not similar. And that is what's going to tell us that it's not vertex transitive. Of course, you may find another way to show that it's not vertex transitive, and that works out just fine. So. In looking at vertex transitive graphs, we expect to find Hamilton paths. Of course, we don't know that this is true. Let's go back up to the conjecture. This was conjectured in 1970, that every finite connected vertex transitive graph has a Hamilton path. Keep in mind, we're only looking for paths. And nobody has yet found an example of a finite connected vertex transitive graph with no Hamilton path. But nobody's been able to show that it will always work. So this is still open in general. So in the next video, I'll start talking about what is conjectured and what is known about Hamilton cycles in graphs.